Hey, man. Just missed Josh. He just headed out to the fields. Oh, no, I just saw him. Oh, okay. So how was your trip to Park Forest? Did you have a good time with Carla? Yeah. Uh, we got we got all caught up. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were really close in, in nursing school. Yeah, I know. Meg, you all right? You seem kind of rattled. Um, I, I'm just tired from the wedding and everything. Okay, well, I better get out to the fields before Josh and Seth think I'm goofing off. Caleb! Meg, I'm sure you must be shocked to see me here, especially in this condition. No, I knew you were pregnant, Julie. But everyone thinks you're in New York. What are you doing hiding out here? And how could you let Caleb go through a divorce while you're carrying his child? All right. You ease up. Okay, Meg? It's not Caleb's child. It's mine. Uh, no, I, I, I don't understand any of this. You were so in love with my brother a, a year ago. All you could talk about was having his child. Well, you know how things are, Meg. Sometimes they change. And when things fell apart with Caleb and I, and, and, and I left the farm, Andy took me in. Does John know about this? No. No. And he can't know. Understand? You're asking me to keep a pretty loaded secret. Well, we need to talk more, but I don't want to keep Carla waiting. All right, well, listen. I'm going to take Julie home. She needs some rest. But you can come by later, and I'll explain to you why it's so important that nobody can know. Hey. Really happening. What? The summer is really starting. <laughs> what we talked about for so long, working a year together. Court, listen. Things are gonna get back to normal really soon. I promise you. I hope so. There's something that I haven't told you. Don't worry. It's nothing bad. I'm just gonna move in with your mom for a few days. Are you really? Well, it's good. What, when, why? Well, because Ellen's going to see uh, Dr. Stewart in Atlanta. I just took the phone to her. Some guy that Dr. Stewart works with. Coronary. Oh, dear Lord. What hospital is David at? Well, we took him to the university hospital. Uh, that was the closest. Uh, Mrs. Stewart, um, is there someone there with you? Yes. Why? What are you... I'm so sorry. But we knew it was too late. Even before we got David to the hospital. That can't be. Ah, you know, I was just taking a look at your seminar schedule. That's a pretty heavy load. Well, that's why I've scheduled most of the sessions for the evening, uh, so I won't miss any lab time. But if you want me to take the days as vacation No, 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 you don't have to do that. I, I just worry about you taking on too much. I like to keep busy. Yeah. Remember me? Yeah. Well, Susan? Hello, John. How you doing, Bob? Okay. Uh, your daughter is on the phone with Larry. She just called him. From Puerto Rico? I don't know. I, look, I'm just relieved to know that you're home. When the operator told me you checked out this morning, I didn't know what to think. Well, it was just time to come home. Well, look, I was just about to have a sandwich with Susan, but I'd much rather come over and see you. Okay. Um, I, I think that would be a good idea, Larry. We have lots to talk about. It sounds important. Uh, look, Larry, why don't, why don't we just wait till you get here to talk, okay? Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. brought to you today by Oreo Cookies from Nabisco.
lost again. on eating wheat thins and oat thins because they taste good. But the whole idea behind these crackers is that you can eat them without feeling guilty. That's why they're baked, not fried. I mean, eat them because they're delicious and you miss the whole point. You know it makes me wanna... Shout Stick saturates tough stains. Penetrates clean through to keep stains from setting till wash day. Want a tough stain out? Shout it out. premium potatoes? Do you know why we prepare them with such care? Just the way you would. And why we cook them in 100% vegetable oil? Of course you do. It's better than all right. It's all right. -a. I'm just relieved. Does that answer your question? Come on, Caleb. A few months ago, you still cared enough to jump bail when you thought Julie was in Seattle in the hospital. That's because I didn't know the truth. When I found out that she was sleeping with that guy in New York, it just capped things off for me. And the ironic thing is, is I wouldn't even know who the father is if Andy Dixon hadn't told me. So you can quit worrying about me, all right? No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I want to say one more thing. Josh and I want a baby so bad. And if I knew that he had a child out there somewhere, yeah, it would hurt at first. But I would still know that that child was a part of Josh. And this baby is a part of Julie, too. Maybe you should think about that. Think about what? Oh, hi. Hi. What are you doing over the middle of the day? I wanted to have lunch with my sister. Oh, all right. Well, great. I got to go to the fields, all right? I'll see you. I think I was worried about you after you left my office. You didn't say anything, did you? I came awful close. You mustn't, Meg. For everybody's sake, you mustn't. I don't understand. I didn't know you were there. Hello. I didn't know that either one of you were out here. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, I, just, uh, I just got back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is my reception. Can you yeah. have a lovely day? Come on inside. Are you bunching up back here? Go. Lunch, be ready. Well, where's Caleb? Oh, he went back out to the fields. Meg, how do you think he's doing? Well, I think he's talking himself into being relieved about this divorce. I, I've wondered about that. I mean, in spite of everything he says, I, I just can't believe he's over his feelings for Julie. Neither can I. Ellen, take a sip of this, dear. Where are we? You were feeling faint. Andy asked the club manager if we could use his office. I want to go home. Please. I think you'd better stay here just a little while longer, dear. How could it happen? I know he was working too hard, but his voice was so strong when I spoke to him on the phone yesterday. He was going to meet me at the airport. Oh, if only I'd have gone yesterday. Oh, my dear, from what you've told me, I don't think anything would have made any difference. At least I would have seen him again. Yes. <laughs> oh. Ellen, Annie told me what happened. I'm so I'm sorry. Can I do anything? Is there anything I can do? I want to get Ellen home. Could you call Bob at the hospital and explain to him what's happened and ask him to meet us there at Ellen and Dave? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, right away, and then I'll tell Bill that I'm driving you over there. All right. Thank you, darling. I 
couldn't believe my eyes when I walked out here and saw you. Well, it's just kind of a spur-of-the-moment decision oh, to come back. Well, selfishly, I'm glad you're here. I missed you so I much. I miss you too, Mom. Does Chris know you're back? All we've heard from him is, when is Franny coming oh, home? No, I don't think he does. Joyce left a note saying that she had taken him to the park. Oh, oh, okay. Does your dad know you're back? Well, actually, yeah, he probably does right now because I just spoke with Larry at the hospital. He's on his way here now. Ah, well... It's really hot, isn't it? Would you like something cool to drink? Uh, Daryl's not going to be staying, Mom. No, no, I, I can stay for a minute. That'd be nice. Thanks, Kim. Oh. Okay, fine. I, I'll be right back. I really need you to leave before Larry gets here, Daryl. Well, not until you tell me why you took off without me this morning. I thought we were flying back together. Well, didn't you get my note? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got it. I got it right here, except it wasn't much of an explanation. <laughs> Daryl, listen. I needed some time alone to think about what I'm going to say to Larry. I've got to be honest with him, and that's going to be really hard. So can you please leave before he gets here? Please. Okay, okay. First, I have to know if what happened between us last night was as important to you as it was to me. Okay. I... Here we go. Fred? Hi, Larry. I didn't expect to see Daryl here. Um... Well, believe me, it's a surprise to me. He he showed up when we were still on the phone, but but he's leaving right now. Listen, I'll just get another glass. No, that's okay. Uh, Larry can have mine. I'll I'll be in touch, Kim. Thanks. Hello. Uh, Kim, it's Bob. I have the best news. Franny's home. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, Larry told me before he rushed out of here. Listen, I'm sure you're anxious to see her. Uh, come on, we're whenever you. There's something. Very difficult that I have to tell you. What? It's about David. He suffered a massive coronary this morning. They weren't able to save him. Oh. My God. My Lord, the killer was eating cookies. I tried. But my client doesn't eat cookies. She eats Fig Newtons. Case dismissed. A cookie is just a cookie, but Newtons are fruit and cake. Freddy. Mr. Fitz. What's the tastiest part of the pretzel? The crispy outside. No, the crispy outside. Say we make a pretzel that only has an outside. Sort of a chip. What would you call them? Delicious. <laughs> Something shocking is going on at Sears. People are leaving the store in droves with brand name electronics. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. It's... Electro days! Electro days. Sir, how much was that LXI camcorder with high-speed shutter, power, zoom, and two extra lenses? $799.99. Wow, that is shocking. Two weeks of Electro days, only at Sears Brand Central. I'm Harry Smith. She's being kept alive by machines. The hospital wants to end her life. Her husband says no. An extraordinary right to life case tomorrow on CBS This Morning. I can't believe it. David Stewart had a massive coronary. Mom, it's not... Oh, God, how... when did you hear? I'm so sorry. I know your families were close. I've known David Stewart all my life. No. It's okay. Larry, listen, I, I, I really wanted to talk about us and how I know it's I... not the time. What can I do to help? Look, may, maybe you should just go back to the hospital for now, huh? And, and I'll call you later. You know where I am if you need me. Yeah. I'll go right away. Franny and I'll go over as soon as we can. I have to stop and find Joyce first. Mom, we can do that on the way there. Yeah, all right. I just want to let her know where, uh, where we're going to be, and I will do whatever I can for Ellen, but, sweetheart, you're really the one that she's going to need most of all right now. All right. I will. Bye-bye. even have a chance to get him to the hospital. Oh, God, Mom. I'm so sorry. Oh, Ellen. Poor Ellen. Oh, 
Julie, honey, I cannot believe you were going through all that while we were just frolicking around at Kirk and Ellie's wedding. Are you sure you're all right? Yes, I'm fine, really. Dr. Hobson wouldn't have let me come home if I wasn't. Yeah, Andy brought me home. He got me all settled in. You say that uh, Meg saw you? Yeah. But, you know, I think it's okay. Because Andy told her that he's the father. Oh, honey, I wonder if that was wise. Uh, Caleb thinks that uh, the father's in New York. What if they compare notes? Hold on. Oh, it, it's all right, honey. It's, uh, it's Paul. Now, you just uh, take care. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Is that Julie? I need to talk to her. Wait. Uh, Paul wants to say hello. Hold on. I'll call you later. Julie. Hi, uh, listen, I just, I just think you ought to know that it's really messing things up for Courtney to have Andy running up to see you all the time. You know, I was afraid of that, but Andy swears to me that it's not a problem. Well, maybe I just misunderstood what was going down. Listen, you take care of yourself, huh? Okay, bye. I wish you hadn't said that to her. She's upset enough as well, it I'm is. I'm sorry, Lisa, but this is really tearing Andy and Courtney apart. Oh, honestly... Yeah, my handsome son. What a nice surprise. Hi. I'm playing messenger boy. Ooh, uh, this is great. the press releases that Ted oh, prepared Lisa. while Ellie's on her honeymoon. I thought that oh. bridal gown you designed for Ellie was adorable. It was just perfect for her. <laughs> Thank you. And if Larry McDermott has his way, you're going to have to uh, start designing a dress for Franny as well. Well, I would like nothing more. I guess Franny's still down in Puerto Rico, isn't she? It's kind of shocked to hear that Daryl Crawford was down there. Honey, ah, uh, how would you like to come for dinner tonight? Tess and I are planning on having a little dinner in the garden. So if you don't have any plans... No, I don't have any plans, sure. Good. I'd love to. But I have a question for you. I called the factory looking for you today, and Dick Wolf said you're planning on going on a trip for yes, a few days. Yes, I am. Um, actually, plans aren't really set yet, but I have to get to New York and get my collection in place long before the show. In Gavin Kruger's showroom? In our showroom. We are sharing the showroom. It's just business, Paul. Nothing more. Then why would this take a few days, Mom? I haven't even Fancy seen this space Mitchell. yet, Paul. It may need some work. Oh, uh, just a moment. Uh, it's for you. It's Andy. You knew you were here. Hey, Andy. Yeah, sure, I'll hang up. Hi. Lisa, Paul, huh? came by to check on our travel plans and to show you the layout of our space. Oh, great. I was just telling Paul and Lisa that we... Uh, I'm making some plans to go. Mm, well, I hope that includes Switzerland, too. All right, then bring him in as soon as you're finished. Great, thanks. Yes, because Mr. Crawford is here. I can get a positive ID on them. Okay. Well, the jewels have come down from Winneka, but there's all the red tape to go through, so... It's no problem. But in the meantime, I think you and I need to talk. I know you couldn't say much from Fanny's hotel room. What is this, a, a lecture coming on? Yeah, I think you deserve Funny it. Daryl, when did you get back? Oh, about an hour ago, Tom. Franny's back, too. I, I stopped by to see if Margot had found out if Arthur had bought the journal, and she, she told me about the Winnetka police and finding the jewel. Did Claiborne call you back? No, he didn't, but I made it very clear to Tyler Adams that I needed to speak to him ASAP. Yeah, you know, I think it's a little odd that he would leave his office without telling where he went, especially with his business so shaky. I think it's a little odd that you would leave town without telling anybody where you were headed. Mac? Mac, are you okay? Sit down. I'm not ill. I just had some terrible news. Your grandmother called from the Stewart house. David died this morning. Freddy! Mr. Fitz. What's the tastiest part of the pretzel? The crispy outside. No, the crispy outside. Say we make a pretzel that only has an outside. Sort of a chip. What would you call them? Delicious. <laughs> Mr. Phipps pretzel chips. How, how do I know which coffee to get? Just look for one Valdez. Right. Buenos dias. I just saw Juan Valdez. Of course. He's on every can of Colombian coffee. When you see him, you know you're getting the richest coffee in the world. Oh. If you want 100% Colombian coffee, just look for Juan Valdez. You can't miss him. Diet soda. It changed the world of soft drinks. 
Pantyhose changed the way we dressed. Now Oil of Olay Foaming Face Wash will change the way you wash your face forever. Get soap clean without soap, without drying. 100% soap free. It even removes eye makeup. Oil free, it rinses clean to leave skin refreshed, yet soft. Even a bit younger looking. Oil of Olay Foaming Face Wash. Changing the way you wash your face forever. What's got into that cat? Whiskey. Introducing frisky sliced varieties in beef, chicken, and seafood flavors. Tender chunks and delicious gravy that brings out the frisky in your cat. What's got into that cat? Frisky. The plan's in motion. We're finally going to do to Roger Thorpe what he's been doing to us. The attack begins. We have the opportunity to expose him for grand theft embezzlement. Now is the enemy trapped. Just a matter of time until we put Roger Thorpe where he belongs. Behind bars. This week on Guiding Light. Tune in tonight for your favorite cartoon crazies. Tonight. Ellen, how sorry I am, and, and and call me if there's anything I can do. It's just that I feel so awkward. Sure. Uh, are you going to call Emily? Oh, I know I have to, but it's really going to throw her for a loop. Like the rest of us. Well, I, I, I will call her. Don't let me keep you. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. Okay. Bob, I'm sorry. I was over at Kim's when you called. Brandy and Kim are both taking it pretty hard. I can imagine. Listen, keep your eye on Susan, will you? This is tough on her, too. Yeah. How are you doing? I know you worked with Dr. Stewart for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't work so well when he was my father-in-law, <laughs> but <laughs> we were pretty terrific in the lab. I learned most of what I know from David. He was very dedicated. And AIDS was his primary concern. Well, I'm sure his work will have a big impact. Oh, I hope so. I guess uh, kind of ruined your your homecoming with, with Franny. Yeah, we said we'd talk later, but she wasn't alone. Daryl? Yeah, and I didn't have a chance to ask why before Bob called the news about Dr. Stewart. Susan. Uh, look, I've got rounds. Call me if you need me, will you? Oh, yeah. Bob, go over to Ellen's. Part of me feels like I should be there, too, but... Yeah, well, I... I do, too. I'm in the same boat as you. But I don't think Ellen's thinking about any of that stuff right now. We should let her know how we feel. Would you go over there with me? Sure, sure. Okay. I, uh... I think I better try to call Emily first. Okay, I'm gonna stop by Iva's. Ellen's one of her top volunteers. Oh, I, I don't think Ivy's in the hospital. I, I saw her leave a little while ago. Oh, I'll leave her a note. <laughs> oh, Mama, your food <laughs> is bad. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's my waist love. Oh, <laughs> I know what you mean. Glad to see you eating. So well, mm -hmm. I guess I better get going. Meg, you want to walk me out? I want to hear more about your visit with Carla. See you later. Okay, oh, Mama, see bye you. Bye. Yeah, sure. So, how did your session go today? I made a big decision on it. Emma, I hope you know how much I have loved being here mm -hmm. with all of you, and I'm so grateful. But for my own sake, I think it's time for me to, to move on and try to become more independent. Well, if you feel you're ready to leave, I mean, that's what it's all about. You gotta, gotta spread your wings. Yes. I think the hardest thing about it will be well, it'll be telling Caleb. We've gotten very close. I, I know that's because he's been lonely without Julie and... Well, no. I know he's been lonely without Julie, but I think his feelings for you are... very separate. That's what Dr. Michaels thinks. But I... It's just so strange the way... our lives, Caleb's and mine's, have crossed and connected. <laughs> Meg, I want your promise, not another word. I don't understand any of this. If Caleb knew that the baby wasn't some stranger's, it might make all no, the difference. No, it's too late. It's just too late. Please, you've got to trust me on this, and don't say anything to Mama about it being Andy's baby. He doesn't want his father to know, 
and it would be a terrible burden on Mama every time she would see John. Now stay out of it. Is there something you're not telling me, Iva? Meg, look, you, you live in Waco. We have to live here. I'm telling you, stay out of it. I mean it. I've got to start calling people, but... Why don't we wait until Bob gets here? You know, she had all these plans about what they would do together when he retired. He had you know, the trips. I don't know what to say to her. Oh, Bob. Andy. Hello, Claire. Hi. Alan. What can I say? I'm just so glad you're here. We have to make plans. I, uh, I haven't called anyone yet. We can get Penny to get in touch with David's grandson in England. I'll oh. call Annie and Dee and Betsy if you'd like me to. Uh, let, let me go get my address book. Ms. McNair? Yes, I called him. He said he'd be over, and he's going to tell Margot. I called Dr. Logan in Atlanta. I'll fly down and bring David home, if that's OK with Ellen. But you haven't been out of the hospital yourself that long, darling. Uh, I'm fine. Oh, I'm so sorry. Ellen. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's the book. Yeah. If you're able to reach the girls, I'll try to talk to them. <clears throat> I'm going to call Betsy first. She's the closest. She should be able to get here tonight. Betsy Andropolis, please. Yes. Come on, this sandwich is where it's at. Where it's his grand sandwiches. Like like Got a sandwich that's better than ever. Oh, steady grams, we put it together. You take two bears and fill them with cream. Just one bite and taste what I mean. Where it's just where it's at. Wholesome gram never tasted like that. If you're not using new advanced cleaning formula Jet Dry Rinse Agent, you're gambling on getting clean dishes. Jet Dry rinses off invisible residues detergents leave behind. Try new advanced cleaning formula Jet Dry and bet on cleaner dishes. Ugh, a poison ivy insect bite rashes. There are too many choices. You only need one. Cordaid. Stop the itch and heal the rash with a brand doctors recommend most. Present arms. Cordaid, the only aid you need. Congratulations! In recognition of your achievements, sitting up, babbling, eating solid foods, we award you our highest honor, Carnation Follow-Up Formula, made especially for older babies' developing senses, so it smells fresh, tastes good, and no formula is more nutritious. It's also priced up to 20% less. Go ahead, you've earned it. Remember, future graduates are looking up to you. Carnation Follow-Up Formula, the right formula at the right time. Continue with part two of As the World Turns in just a moment. She's young enough to be his daughter, and she's coming to Norman Lear's Sunday dinner. We're just not ready to share him yet, and certainly not with somebody I might have gone to camp with. Followed by the comedy classic that's a hit all over again. Even Jesus was a Jew. Yeah, but only on his mother's side. All in the family classic Sunday right after Norman Lear's Sunday dinner. This is CBS. Jay Tronfeld has been helping people from all walks of life for 20 years. If you've been injured in an accident, call Jay Tronfeld and Associates, the People's Law Firm. We can help. Hey, what's Rusty doing to this guy? On the next People's Court, when Rusty takes a look at this man's foot, does he stick it in his mouth? Very much upset, Your Honor. Find out what he's so upset about. And then I saw him climb up on the trunk and then stand on top of the roof and jump up and down twice. Neighbors go absolutely nuts. I saw her do it. I actually witnessed her I'm, do it. I'm sure I did. Watch the next People's Court. People's Court, today at 4 on TV6. 
If you've been injured in an accident, a courtroom is probably the last place you want to go to solve your problems. Actually, most injury cases don't go to court. But with those that do, you need an experienced law firm that'll work hard to win your case. If you've been hurt in an accident, you can meet with Marks and Harrison for free. We're paid only when you collect. In or out of court, we'll protect your rights and negotiate for you before the gavel drops. Marks and Harrison, more than 70 years helping injured people. WKRP is now in Richmond, weeknights after Nightbeat. Wondered whatever became of me. I'm living on the air in Cincinnati. And now part two of As the World Turns. Lord knows Ellen and I have certainly had our differences, but my heart certainly does go out to her. Well, thank you very much for the use of your phone. I hope you don't mind if I wait for a call back from Zurich. Uh, no, no. Gavin, I really can't make any plans to travel until I know when the funeral is going to be for David Stewart. No, 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 of course not. Did you, uh, did you ever get to meet David? Oh, yes, yes. He and his wife were auctioneers at the AIDS ball last summer. Lovely woman. I hope her husband left her well provided for. I don't think Ellen has to worry about money. However, she and David did make quite an investment in the retirement village, which seems to be in question at the moment. I don't think Ellen is thinking about that right now. I'm sure she isn't. She must just feel numb right now. The enormity of this whole loss that she has, I'm sure has not sunk in. That comes later. You know, maybe in a strange way, it's, it's been for the best that Dave has been gone so much. It's just, maybe it won't be such a shock to her when she wakes up alone. That's the hardest part. Now, if it's better for you to come tomorrow, I'll understand. I know, Mr. I love you too, dear. Yes, I will. I promise. Good. Goodbye, dear. Dee wants to call Annie and Jeff. Maybe that would be best, dear. I didn't hear what happened when you tried to reach Betsy. Oh, they said that she was on an inspection tour, and I left a message for her to call her grandmother as soon as possible. You see, I told you. I, oh. I don't know when we're going to be able to even get into... Excuse me. Could I call Emily again now? Oh, thank you. Sure. Okay. Mom, I'm I made some, some lemonade. I don't really know what else to do. I'll put it up here. It's just what we need. Yeah. No, I don't go back now. Sorry. Oh, I don't know. Dr. Stewart was one of the best people I ever knew. Thank you for coming by, Paul. Sure. Does, uh, does Emily know you? No, I was just trying to call her, but I, I, I hate to tell her the news on the telephone. She doesn't have anybody out there, you know. Yeah, I know what you she's mean. She's close to. You know what? Can you guys hold off for about an hour before you call Emily? I have an idea. Well, I, I've got to get back to the hospital. Okay, I'll, I'll get back in touch with you. Well, sure. See what I mean? About what? Well, Paul may say. Yeah. That he's over, I'm with his blue in the face, but I know differently. He still cares about her a lot. That's right, if you need to reach me, I'll be at the Stewart house. Thanks. Well, honey, I wish you were gone. Well, I wish I were too, but someone's got to hold down the fort here till Higgins gets back, but then I will come. All right, I'll get Mac and be on my way. Uh, honey, tell Ellen and Graham. I will. Tom, would you tell Franny I'm thinking of? Well, I guess I read that message loud and clear. Do you blame him? Franny is his kid's sister. He's always been very protective of her. And you are a man who just lost his wife two months ago. Tell him, what were you doing down in Franny's hotel room in Puerto Rico? The lab sent these down. When that the police say they're worth a few hundred thousand. Okay, 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 Daryl. I want you to look at these very, very carefully because Dana's future depends upon it. Are these Carolyn's?
I like wearing white, but not under my arm. This solid leaves a white flaky mess. But now, there's new Arid Sports Scent. Solid protection that never turns white or messy. New Arid Sports Scent. Solid protection without the white mess. When you rinse first with plaques, normal everyday brushing takes on a whole new meaning. Plaques, clinically proven to remove more plaque than brushing alone. I would like to speak with you about a threat to the entire deli way of life. It's these Oscar Mayer deli thin slices. Now, I'm told they taste just like the meats from my deli. Sliced fresh, real thin, and, well, this is all true. But if you're going to tell me that this Oscar Mayer sandwich is just as good as my deli's, I got to say, whoa. Because if it doesn't come from my deli, you don't get one of these. Presenting Oscar Mayer deli thin slices. Deli fresh taste without the deli. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, Harry, are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive there. Carol's necklace had some doodads hanging off it, and the, you know, the earrings were longer. <sighs> okay, all right. So it's a coincidence that the same sort of items show up in Dana's hometown. Yeah, but it still doesn't eliminate the fact that Dana stole Carolyn's ladybug charm and was picked up for shoplifting when she was in high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Franny was going to talk to her, but now with David's death... Well, somebody better get to it. Yes, somebody should, and I am going to right now. I'm going to call Dana's mother. Dana asked me not to, but... You know, she said that... They didn't want to deal with it. They didn't want to get her any help when she was arrested for shoplifting. Said she was, they were very embarrassed by the whole situation. But it just strikes me as odd. Why all the talk of therapy if it was just a one-time situation? Seems to me they might have known she had a problem with kleptomania. Yes, is this Mrs. Graham? Yes, Mrs. Graham. This is Margot Hughes, Oakdale PD. Uh, there's just something I was hoping you could help us with. We understand that Dana was arrested for shoplifting when... Yes, well, Mrs. Mrs. Graham, it, it actually is necessary that we... Okay, well, we just want... We have Dana's best interest at heart, and we just want to help her in any way that we... Oh, okay. Okay, great. Well, what time do you think... Uh... Okay. Sylvia hung up on you? Well, she had some guests over for lunch, and she didn't want to get into it over the phone. But she is going to come down to Oakdale later this evening. Oh, I'd like to be here for that. No, no, no. You let me talk to them both first. But in the meantime, let us, you and I, talk about your sudden trip. Harry, why? Why did you follow Franny down to Puerto Rico when she knew she wanted time alone? I... Yeah, I had to, Margo. You know, it it seemed like the right thing to do. For once in my life, I did the right thing. Yeah? Really? How can you be so sure? Well, look, the two days that, that Franny and I had down there, everything changed for us. You know, Franny, Franny admitted that she's in love with me. You know, it's hard to explain, but, but being away from Oakdale and all the memories, well, it freed us to really get our feelings out in the open. So why did Franny run out on you, Harry? She was worried about Larry. And hopefully she's been as honest with him as she was with me. Look, it's one thing that, you know, I can't help her through. But I want to help her through everything for the rest of our lives, together. Oh, come on, Margo. Be happy for me. We do love each other. Larry. Hi. Hi. Don't worry, I'm not here to finish the conversation we were having earlier. It's not the time. I didn't know Dr. Stewart very well, oh. but I was moved by his remarks at the AIDS benefit last year and by his obvious dedication. I wanted to come by and express my condolences to Ellen. And Lila wanted me to express her sympathies, too. If you're not ready to leave yet, perhaps Andy can give you a ride back later on. Oh, no, no, no. I, I have to get back. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Are you all right? Yeah, of course. Good. Why do you keep asking me that, anyway? 
Because he loves you. Just give me a minute with Kim. No, it's... Can I talk to you for just a second? Uh, excuse me. It's all right, dear. Be honest with me now. I don't know. Maybe it'd be a good idea if I just sort of disappear for a couple of days. But with Dee coming into town and everything like that, you know? I mean, I feel that that stuff isn't all in the past, but... Uh, well, I feel I'd like to be here, but then I don't know. Well, maybe I just got my head in the sand. I don't no, know what. No, no, I think you're. I think you were right. I think that is in the past, mm -hmm. and ultimately you came to the point where you respected, and admired David. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a strange way of showing it, I suppose, from time to time. But I think Ellen understands I'm that. I'm sure that she does. Stewart residence. Bob. Oh, I'm so glad you answered. Um, how is Ellen? Well, she's a very strong lady, as you know. Yes. I, uh, I hate to bother you right now, but I was just on the phone with Duncan. The Argus uh, obit department wants to do an article on, well, they're putting together an article on David, and uh, I wondered if maybe if you have time, if you could call Duncan and answer some questions he still has. Of course. I'll be glad to. All right, Bob. Thank you so much. Tell Ellen I'll be over there later. Mom, I need to talk to you. Okay. Honey, bye -bye. did you get over to Ellen's house? Uh, yeah, I just came from there. Uh, I'm glad Gavin's still here. Gavin, I know my mom has a lot of influence with you, and I'm hoping she'll use it to persuade you to do something positive for Emily. I go to Lens Crafters because with my job, glasses in an hour are not just a convenience, they're a must. Lens Crafters puts the whole lab right in the store to custom craft your top quality glasses in about an hour. Lens Crafters. Custom crafted eyeglasses in about an hour. It's man's appreciation of the finer things, like these A&W root beer and cream soda floats that sets us apart from the common beast. There goes that theory. A&W root beer and cream soda floats. Two great tastes made even greater. <laughs> Baby, on your delicate skin, I wouldn't use just any sunblock. <laughs> Between you and the sun, I use Water Babies. It protects to SPF 45 without irritating. No wonder pediatricians recommend it most. <laughs> Up you go. Water Babies. Put it between your baby and the sun. Who says you can't have it all? Not me. And certainly not Fruit of the Loom. They have this new collection of panties called Feminine Style. All the styles you'd ever want. They're colorful, cute, lacy, racy. We're talking major great looking. With all the comfort you'd ever need. So there, you can have it all. Slip into the new Feminine Style collection from Fruit of the Loom. These are for Saturday night. <laughs> Why am I telling you this? I swim, I jog, I love junk food. Sometimes even I get constipation. When it happens to me, I take this little pill. It's X-Lax. Surprised? More people choose X-Lax than any other laxative. Today's X-Lax gives you a choice. Extra gentle pills when you need a little help, regular pills when you need a little more. Today's X-Lax, for regular people who sometimes aren't. Do you have anybody to cover for Bob tomorrow? I've talked with Dr. Phelan already. Susan? Oh. Gavin has something to say. Hi, John. Hi, I'm very sorry to hear about your friend and colleague. And I'd like to do whatever I can to help. And Paul came up with a splendid idea. I would be pleased if you would let my pilot fly you to L.A. to tell Emily in person and bring her right back to Oakdale. I'll also have a car waiting to take you to her. We'll do whatever you think is best for Emily. Uh, excuse me. Thank you. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I really appreciate well, it. Paul's the one to thank. Speechless. Yes, please, put her right through. Hi, Emma. It was a great wedding last night. Wasn't it beautiful? <laughs> Listen, John, I'm, I'm sorry to trouble you, but I've been calling and calling Ivan, and there's no answer. And I'm wondering, if you see her around, could you tell her to give me a ring before she gets home? Is anything wrong? No, I just wanted to pick up something for me in town. 
Oh, okay. I was uh, looking for her myself a little bit earlier, and Rex told me that she had taken the afternoon off. What are you doing? I'm looking for miscellaneous cords. Andy already did that this morning. Oh, he's so wonderful. Lisa thinks that we might have made a mistake telling Meg a different story than Caleb. Well, if Meg doesn't say anything to Caleb, then we don't have a problem. Yeah, but what if she should tell Josh, and Josh thinks that Caleb has a right I'll to talk Meg. to Meg. I'll talk to Meg. Don't worry about it, okay? All right. Oh, but one more thing that's bothering me. What if Caleb should try to call me in New York at the Gillette's? You know, he's got that number. Look... You know, you may not want to hear this, but the truth is, I don't think Caleb wants to call you in New York or anywhere else. And I assure you that Meg is not going to say anything about seeing you or ask who the father is. I told her, for everyone's sake, that she has to stay out of this. Oh, hey. Where was Mama going? She's going to the repair shop to pick up the vacuum cleaner. Well, why didn't she ask Seth or me to do it? Because you two were busy. And while you and I are alone... Look, don't start in again, I all right, Meg? To, Caleb, okay? You and Julie wanted a baby so much. I, how do you know that the baby isn't yours? Because she said it wasn't. And I don't have to bother to tell you whose I thought it was when she didn't say whose it was in the letter. Thank goodness Andy cleared it up. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to look Holden in the eye. How much do you really know about this guy from New York? Look, all I know is he owns a modeling agency. Seth went to see him when he heard that Julie was staying with him and his wife in Park Avenue. Now Andy says that Julie didn't know the guy was married until it was too late. I don't see how Julie can be so sure. Maybe she took some tests. I don't know. Go see Josh in the fields or something. You're driving me crazy. You know, if I were you, Caleb, I'd sure want to see the results of those tests. Uh oh, be careful. Caleb's in a terrible mood. Uh-oh. Are you? No, not anymore. Hey, you look good with wildflowers. You? Yeah. I always thought I was more of a wallflower than a wildflower. Well, you're wrong. Actually, I'd like a picture of you just like that. Well, maybe you better take one before I leave. Leave for where? I was just telling your mama. I think it's time for me to get a place of my own. Maybe near Barclay. So I, I think I'm ready now. Huh. What? Well, I just, uh, I don't know if I'm ready. You know, not seeing you here in the morning or when I come in from the fields. Uh, gives me kind of a funny feeling thinking about it. But if you, th you think you're ready, uh, I'm happy for you. to get a bag that can take this? Isn't it worth this for a bag that can take this? Announcing the new Hefty Steel Sack, the toughest, most puncture-resistant bag Hefty makes, and only two cents more per bag than the average. Hefty, hefty Steel Sack. Ernie? It's Friar Tuck. Why wasn't I consulted on these new munchums? We didn't need a fryer. Munchums are baked. Oh, yeah? What does that sound like? A chip. Exactly. But it's a cracker. Huh? New Keebler Munchums are amazing little crackers that crunch like chips. You've baked crackers as crunchy as chips? Yes, sir. What is the snack world coming to? Munchums, we hope. New Keebler Munchums, the most snackable crackers ever baked by elves. This is double load of trouble. And only Carpet Fresh has a double action formula with Balex and new Potpourri Sachet to eliminate tough odors in the rug and freshen the room. Nothing freshens carpets like Carpet Fresh from Airwick. We're just going home to pack a few overnight things, dear. We won't be long. Is there anything else we can do while we're out? I can't think of anything, Mac. Thank you. 
I would like to send dinner over from Mona Lisa. Oh, Lisa, the neighbors have been coming to the door all afternoon with casseroles and salads. Courtney and Andy are making a list of everything right now. I don't know how everyone found out so quickly. It's not real to me yet. I'm glad Kruger is sending Susan over there on his jet. Well, I'm not so sure that Gavin's very happy about it, but the way that Paul presented it, he could hardly refuse. Anyway, Susan's on her way, and it'll be better for Emily. Mm. Tom, I have something to tell you, and I'm sorry I haven't told you before, but every time I thought of it, well, it just wasn't the right time. Well, what is it? Gavin told me that he knows that Hal is working for the Crime Commission. How would he have known that? I have no idea. Did you ask him? Yes, I did, and he told me that he has friends in high places. Then I will talk to Joe Bailey about it. A leak like that could be very, very dangerous. Ellen, I... I know it's even more difficult when it happens, when it's sudden like this. I, th I think that uh, you and David were very much like Earl and me. Well, you didn't leave anything left unsaid. And you were apart a lot, but... You made the most of your time that you had together. That's so important. I know that, uh, well, you're not going to want to believe this right now, but you just have to remember those times and think about it and cherish it. And that's something that not many people can do. Do you have any idea how wonderful you were today? What do you mean? Well, taking charge of everything. I don't know what we would have done without you propping us all up. And now, taking this trip to Atlanta would have been so difficult for Ellen to do this. I'm just glad that I can do it. Hope you get some rest tonight. You too. What were you going to say? Oh, nothing. It'll last till you get back. I just... Kind of an emotional time, I guess, for everybody. Feelings get all distorted not necessarily they can become clearer too well you take very good care of yourself all right i'll do whatever i can to help ellen i know you will god it's just that this all happened so suddenly well we've both been there jennifer the nick we certainly know what ellen is going through diet is going to be good for me, too. Yeah. I know you have a lot of family out at the farm tonight. Well, I have family here, too. Every time that phone rings, I think it's going to be Lucinda. Well, if it is, you just hand it to me. Hello. Hi, Julie. It's Meg. Hi, Meg. No, I feel fine. There's no after effects from the fall. Good. Good. Look, there was something that Caleb said that I really think you ought to know. He said what ended it for him was the fact that you slept with some stranger, but you didn't. And I just think if he knows that the baby wasn't some stranger's, it might be entirely different for him. No, I don't think it's going to make any difference at all. I disagree. And I don't understand why you aren't willing to talk to him. If you and Andy are willing for Ivan and Lucinda to know, why not Caleb? It's gotta be smaller. Oh yeah, I love it when the package weighs about 300 pounds. You need a lot less. I don't like having to use a lot of detergent. It would never spill. I love it when it spills all over the place. I'd make it powerful. Yeah, we'd get the clothes clean. And it wouldn't dare fade my color. Definitely. Is that asking too much? Cheer with Color Guard. A scoopful cleans a machine full. I'm talking clean. Think about what your kitchen sink goes through every day. Everything you pour out, wash off, or dump down actually leaves behind stains that can seep deep down below the surface of your sink. That's why you need Comet with bleach-boosted Chlorinol. Comet cleans and disinfects. It penetrates the tiny cracks, powering out the tough, greasy food stains other cleansers leave behind. 
so deep down your kitchen sink is cleaner. Comment, deep down you know it's cleaner. Give them to me, I'll change them. Mm, that's all right, I'll do it. You've got a headache, take a break. How do you know I have a headache? For a headache so bad it shows, take Excedrin with more medicine than regular strength pain relievers. Hi, I'm Barbara Mandrell, looking for the Visa tag. Here it is on clothes made from Visa, America's freedom fabric. Visa of Dacron releases stains. So if you love that freedom, look for the Visa tag, America's freedom fabric. Tonight, Jake takes a crash course in being a crook to bust a master criminal. You could have gotten me killed. A deadly game to catch a thief on Jake and the Fat Man. Then, on America's streets. Police, get your hands up! In America's hearts. High noon for handguns. An all-new 48 hours. It's all tonight. Everybody thinks their family's crazy. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it. Please, shut up! <laughs> Everybody's right. Family Man Doubleheader, Monday and Wednesday. Stay tuned for Guiding Light, next on most of these CBS stations. CBS.